Oh, thank you so much, Slax. We do get into it. Game number one here between PSG, LGD, and Boom Esports. John, you hear this crowd? It is absolutely electrifying in here. You've seen both these drafts. What are you thinking? I think we're going to have a good game regardless. We've got a few surprises from Boom. You know, we heard Mushi. It's all according to plan that they're getting out there. So we'll see if they are truly ready for that plan. We've got a lot of fans from Southeast Asia and a lot of fans of Chinese teams here too. So the crowd is going to be loud throughout the entire game. And I'm looking forward to see some of that Southeast Asian and Asian spirit overall. Absolutely. That's what we love to see. We do get into it though. Game one, Jonathan, one of these teams has to leave today. It's not a best of one this time around. We've got a best of three series, but so much on the line and it feels like this is a series that just shouldn't be happening. We're in round two of the lower bracket. Oh, yeah. Boom Esports had 1.4% chance of making it through the playoffs from the group stage. And PSG or GD, I mean, you would have just thought they were in the grand finals through the upper bracket. Yeah, and they, they've had such a smooth run throughout the year. Maybe the performances were a little bit more up and down, you know, not really managing to get those big wins they'd want. But a lot of people had high hopes for them. Same thing with Boom, though. Like, every single time we've seen Boom go into an international tournament, it's always kind of fallen flat, but this is a, you know, this could be their opportunity to prove everyone wrong as well. And again, a lot of hopes hanging on that last Southeast Asian team here. Absolutely, we'll see how it does go. Of course, we'll start with the mid lane. Nothing to say going to be there against the Ardu Yopash. The Mars versus Kunka. What are you thinking about this one? Who has the advantage? Who should win out this lane? I mean, it feels a lot easier for the Kunkka, right? You've always got Tidebringer coming out. The Mars has some play though. By level two, level three, you can threaten, you can get some good spear backs, but it's just a lot more consistent for the Kunkka to kind of work that lane as long as he kind of dodges out from Yopaja's aggression when he does dip in. What about that bottom lane, John? I mean, you've got Jack, Jackie and Skem, of course, against Faith Beyond there on that slot. I mean, it seems like a bit of a tough lane for Jackie as it does go on. Right when you get the levels up on face beyond it with that added bash, it's always hard for the life stealer. Do you think maybe the crystal maiden can kind of relieve that pressure as the game goes on? In somewhat, it, it's really aggressive lane. We heard what the panel was saying about that bond lane. It's just slaughter plus snap fire, all the stuns in the world. You can just easily eat through the life stealer if he's not careful, especially in those early levels. Yeah, and it's just chain stun after chain stun. And the CM can only do so much in his lane. You do have enough mangoes out from Skem to kind of sustain the harassment, but it when it comes to commitment, I don't see LGD really being shoved away just from Skem's presence. Yeah, I mean, you've got that, that deadly combination as well, right, with the cookie into the crush. Oh, it's yeah. just so hard to escape, and I'll see how they do try to abuse it. Of course, we did have a look at that top lane as well as Yopaj. He does end up missing that spear, but top lane, FBZ and Tim's going to be against Ame, and of course, why? Seems like a bit of a, another rough lane for both sides here, at least for, for Boom Esports. Uh, the Phoenix off lane coming out as well against the Snapfire kind of surprised us, John, but what are you thinking about this top lane? I mean, it makes sense in some ways, you know, attack speed slow on to the Monkey King does make that lane really annoying. At the same time, Ame can just kind of dance around a lot more, but it's an added attack range. Right. So he's not directly in front of the creeps. He has some leeway to walk away when he does see the fire spirits coming out. And with Y around, you just take a really annoying creep. You can always trade fairly well up against Tim's. You can't really fully commit for combinations here on Boom early on with the tag team, as we do see the shards coming out from Tim's here as well. It does feel like for Boom, this is maybe a level three, heck, even level four or five, where you can really start to get aggressive. And that might be more than enough room for Ami to just farm up and get what you can. Yeah, I mean, you saw why he went for that early divine ra divine favor. I was about to say divine rapier. John's still <laughs> thinking about yesterday's game, but you know, just wanting to play a passive lane, I think, here for Ami is, of course, why? Just gonna do his best to make sure he does remain alive. You do see the headdress as well, of course. Plenty of region available there, and why? Just making sure his monkey kin can stay there forever. We'll see what Tim's NFBZ can try to do about it. Back into the mid lane, nothing to say. Like you mentioned, John, should have a very good time and is having a very good time. 17 and 3 on the Kunkka. But well, we've seen this man play the Kunkka many, many times. He's an expert at this hero, and obviously showing us a bit of a masterclass here against Yopash. Yeah, it's, the same goes for Yopach, though. He plays a lot of Kunkka, so he should understand the ins and outs of almost every matchup. It is just tougher. Again, Kunkka's just much more consistent with a harassment there. I have bunting for you. We have a fight up the top lane, just trying to make sure these pulls don't get away. Bot lane. In a bit of activity, Faith Bian and Sin Q have been getting rather low on the Snapfire and the Slider, but they will regen up with that salve available on Faith Bian. Though a nice cancel there from Skem. It's against that Crystal Maiden, as long as you've got the regen. FBZ top lane, he got rather close to dying, but he's going to be just fine. Question is, does he have the regen to remain in the lane now? He's going to need a little bit more to fly out. Does have the Courier coming in with at least the Tangos. 
and the Ring of Regen, so a little bit more to play with. That's just a lot of space coming out from Ami. He's had a little bit of a slower lane, not too far behind from anyone else, but it's not like a free lane so far, I and mean, the big difference is really just nothing to Say's lane. A lot is coming out from this Kunkka. A faster level 6 lines up with so much aggression that you can get out with these early timings that a lot of you heroes do have. Like, heck, even a good Chen rotation at some point towards mid might ruin that tempo for Yopanj, which he really wants in this lineup. It feels like the Mars is going to be setting it for Boom. Very close to the battle of strike there for Ami, just barely off and connecting Dyer's with FBZ. Still bullying out the Phoenix very, very effectively, and FBZ just going to go back to the fountain for a reset. Of course, going back to the mid lane, you saw Skem and Tim's rotate. They secure both water runes, they secure both bounty runes, so just really en enabling Yopage, not allowing nothing to say that the kind of bottle refill he may be looking for, or just the region in general. There's no runes available whatsoever for PSG LGD, and I suppose that's one good way of just slowing down the mid lane of LGD, is just take all the runes away. Yeah, it can kind of cause nothing to say to play a bit safer, but he's always got the XTP back for a top-up. He really does feel the pressure, and they're not quite committing on Boom to apply that pressure. Still focusing on the side lanes. You see Tim's here just being chased away, but creep army of Y. He's got the most annoying creeps, Chain Lightning creep and the Purge creep up. So you really can't do much about that if you're the Tusk right now. I'm gonna try and go on to the Tusk. Oh, the great bound to strike out from Arme from a mile away and Y able to secure first blood here for PSG LGD. That was right on the edge there with Arme. My goodness. Yeah, and it's just when you have access to that small camp and you get lucky with some of these creeps, it just gets really hard. There's just not much the Tusk can do. And again, Ami is just getting a lot of space out. 23 to 13 and the CS slightly above Jackie. But the Monkey King can kind of just get active a little bit faster, though, I feel like. Seems going to have a rotation up towards the north, maybe just scouting out that Dire Triangle. Of course, Power Runes are coming up very, very soon. We'll see if Boom want to try and secure both, both sides as well here. As this game actually just going to go for the block on the Ancients in Q. Oh. May not have caught him doing that. I believe he was within the fog at the time. Say. Well, nothing to say mid lane. He's going to get sharded up here. And they are just trying to contest power runes right now, as you will see Y and Sinq also damage. join the fray. And it's going to be skimmed down at the bot side of the rune that does actually pick up the double damage. So he just gets away with it, just completely denying it off from nothing to say. And just a great way of slowing down the Kunkka, not allowing any rotations. Though, as I say that, they may just run mid. Arena is down defensively. Can they take him down? It's a lot of damage flying out. And Sinq, he'll still land the cookie through the arena just on the outer edge they just hold him down but now nothing to say he could be in danger tims and skim getting to work it's the double damage actually doing a hell of a lot of work but sing q he shows up again they find another is tims can he run now sing q really chasing far very nice cookie and a triple kill out for sing q Oh, it's that aggression we talked about, having such a great foundation out from such a strong start from it today, and with how good your supports are at going towards mid, it's just really easy to bully out. Boom started that with a really good spear opportunity, but not really able to commit with Tim's around. He's under-leveled on a Tusk, still level 2, about to hit 3. There's not much he can really do to help Yopaj find these kills. Absolutely not. It's a very slow start here for Boom, but a great start for PSG OGD. 3k ahead. Ame, I mean, you kind of talked about this already. He's been just free farming this whole time. You know, seven minutes in, he's not too far in, but you look at the net worth just snowballing out of control already. And you could say the same about every core on the side of PSG OGD, all the way at the top of the three cores from the dire end of things. And but you couldn't have asked for a better start. Yeah, it's just perfection. Zero to four, 3K lead at seven and a half minutes in. And you're gonna hit all your spikes really fast. Level six coming out for Faith Beyond. Gonna make it a lot easier to start finding those kills. Already has the Morbid Mask ready as well. And the timings for Boom, it's, such, it's so level dependent. You're waiting for the egg to kind of tie in with the arena. You want more levels up on your Tusk for a little bit more damage and a little bit more utility out from the Snowball and the Shards. And you kind of want Jackie to just farm it. it they need to kind of get their supports online and really get FBZ online with Phoenix because that's their big combo, the Arena Egg. It, it's got to come into play at some point. It certainly does. And you're always going to have to be worried about Sin Q in the end of the day, right, with that, uh, with that little Shredder. She hit that level one mark of the Egg. LGD, they'll slow the game down a little bit. No need to rush this one, though. As I say that, we do have a rotation into the mid lane. Yo, A little bit of danger here as Q once again with a fantastic rotation. Backing up, nothing to say, but do they have the damage this time around? Yo, gonna try to run, but they've got it. The Tidebringer was there, and now the cookie back out from Q. They won't care for the Tusk kill. No need to overextend for that. They've got the big one already.
Yeah, they're, they're just tempering themselves so well on LGD. They saw that movement down from the sports down bot. They knew they had enough space to go for Yopaj. They scouted out for the Chen creep at bot lane. And Yopaj just can't do much. Like, the moment he gets X stuff, you do have enough magical damage on LGD. And Boom are just trying to get something on the sides. They're committing so much time to try to find those pickoffs. But LGD just punish. Absolutely. Very, very tough start. I mean, you've just got to try and slow the pace down now if you are Boom. In the meantime, more stacks being made, but no, the sentry is still there. So they have not managed to deal with that sentry that was there by Skim. In fact, he's got them both of them. Really trying to slow down the pacing of nothing to say. They've done absolutely everything to slow this man down, but he's still top of the net worth board. In fact, he's going to find Jackie on the Lifestealer. X is there, but Rage will be there in time to juke out the cookie. Still faith beyond. It's going to show up. They do have the X back. Jackie, he's in huge trouble on Shin Q. He's going to find a fourth kill. Uh, this Snapfire, he, he's just doing too much work. Uh, he's all over the map, and Jackie popping that Rage a bit early. The moment he saw the cookie come out, while the X was on, he had to rage and he couldn't outlast that X mark so he just gets punished towards a smoke rotation out from boom trying to head up top but they're still not finding anything for their trouble they drag the opage around for that it's LGD really working this map out really well. Just using the vision they have from the Chen Creeps. Well, it's hard to get activity on Ame. Yeah, he's got an arcane room, but in comes nothing to say along with Ame. Arena is down, but here come the kisses, Tims. He'll buy them a bit of time, allow them to get away from those kisses, but it's still a lot of damage. Now the egg will be dropped down. Ame, he might be in trouble, but no Tims. He's the one in danger as he does go down to Y. PSG or DD, they'll just keep running. They might just want to reset and just back out of this team fight, as it seems like Boom have brought Jackie over, but it's going to be a bit of a waste of time for the life stealer. Nothing gonna come out for Boom. LGD still zero to seven in their favor. Boom to pick up one kill. And you see how confident they are. They just drag in Ame. They start to use that monkey king, get a little bit more vision out, get some good jumps in to follow up. And Boom expend the arena and the egg. The combination was there, but they didn't lock anyone in. LGD, they're just sidestepping everything. They are not even giving Boom any leeway. Like not a crack has been opened yet. Still zero kills on the board. His faith beyond. He'll take care of the bot T1 tower. Has the Mask of Madness up. Gonna make very, very quick work of it. This is what I was kind of mentioning earlier, John. Like, against the Lifestealer, you're gonna have such a good time perma-bashing Jackie up if he does get caught out with the initial stun. And I'll see if they can capitalize on it later on for now. I mean, with the 6k net worth lead, they can basically do whatever the hell they want, LGD. Yeah, they've got free reign of the map. They've got some pretty good wards by the ramp sides on the river. So they're always going to be able to check if Goom is trying to sneak around without the smoke. Goom, for their part, just constrained on their side of the map. They're not able to cross that river. They're not able to really scout out, use that deep board they have on the top jungle to stop any of this farm game. Like, it's just a very static game right now for Boom and LGD. And they could play it static now as well. They're going back to farming with Ame, just getting that build up into the Desolator coming out here for the Monkey King. They've even got the early mech up and running for Y. So, so much more sustaining in these fights. Considering how durable you are with Chen, with Konka and the boat buff, even if Boom somehow managed to get that initiation, it doesn't feel like they have enough damage to eat through that. Absolutely not. And like, we're talking about damage LGD. They've got all the damage. Like, you're pointing out the Deso and Ame coming out with the Corrosive Haze on top of that. Oh. I, Armlet's just going to do nothing with all that bonus armor you get there on Jackie. And just such a painful experience to have to try and deal with as LGD. They are starting to move in, but Boom are waiting. In there goes Jackie. They find Y. They do have the help around, though. Nothing to say. Trying to save the day of the Chen, but the Y is still going to drop. That's one. Just a pause five kill here for Boom, but it is the first kill of the game for them to pick up. And that's a start. Yeah. It's a start, and not the biggest, but a little cheeky call. Oh, Faith Beyond almost finds Tims, but the Snowball is going to buy a little bit of time as Tims is still going to drop, and now Yopage, he's been caught out. Balance is there as well. They take him and down. No chance survival, just perma stuns out from LGD. Into the T1 mid tower they go. And it doesn't take too long to push for just how much damage is coming out. Not even the full Deso out from Ami yet. Just with the numbers they have, with a little shredder to provide some minus armor, it just melts. And boom, again, they, they just keep coming in one by one. They find that one kill in the Chen. And then they just don't manage to get anything else. They don't manage to play with their combinations, and LGD just recognize that. When they're split up, when the egg's not a threat, they've got a huge open. Here we go. Why? 
been caught out, but the cookie is going to be there. Why will be just fine. Snowball, they're going to follow up. They really want something for their trouble. If the Hand of God was there, why? Still running. Tornado away. It's just not going to be enough. They even commit the arena for this. I mean, it's heavy commitment from Boom, but considering the, the, the state of the game right now, they need everything they can get. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just the same kill back to back. It's just not swinging that much in effort. You have to commit so many heroes in. It's a lot of space for LGD. They're just able to go elsewhere, able to get that build up they want on Ame, on Nothing to Say, and on Fate Beyond. And there's just no stopping those fours. I mean, boom, are lagging behind by a pretty big margin 14 minutes in, 8k net worth deficit. And the timings for LGD are just ramping up. You know, more damage coming out from Kunkka. BKBs will come out soon. On top of that, Deso timing coming out from Ame. And you have very little to deal with any of that spell immunity here. Yeah, you certainly don't have much. Zalme just continuing with that farm. Third in net worth right now. Only third to both his two calls on LGD. Nothing to say. Still at the top somehow, considering how much they tried to shut the man down. And was Faith Beyond right behind him. Almost has his BKB up now, and that's going to be very problematic. Don't worry about anything here from Boom once you have that up, apart from Jackie, but he's just nowhere near the stage where he's ready to fight. Dyer's top tower is under Again, they can just happily slow the game down, understanding their own strategy, their own draft, and just wait till Dyer's perhaps the mid game to get going once again. Boom. All they can do, I mean, this is the draft where they want to try and move in and start fighting early on, but they just can't make it happen right now. They've got to sit back and relax. They need to wait for their own BKBs. Maybe a blink coming out from the punch down the line to kind of help them set up with a better arena, catch some better heroes out, ensure the spear lands on target and have that follow through from the egg. Because you are playing against a snap. As long as the snap fires outside arena, you're pretty okay in protecting that egg. So your combinations can still kick off. It's just, it, it, it's a lot harder than what LGD have, and all they need to do is throw out an X, get a blink up on your slaughter down the line, maybe after the BKB, and you just have low commitment initiation. It's not going to cost you much from LGD to just keep that aggression, whereas boom, they can't risk it. They, they just have to keep playing the slower game, take what space they can, and LGD are just thriving in that environment. Well, with a better scan out on SynQ, Skem, he's really the only one around right now. As PSG or GD, they'll be the ones to move in and try to find the Maiden. Underneath vision, but does manage to back out of range. New Paj, gonna stick around. Sinku and Ame, very confident with their own positioning, understanding it's gonna be quite hard for Boom to actually pick them off. Instead, Boom will just back their way out, understanding again they're not ready for a big team fight right now. Not even these smaller pickoffs. Jackie now, double damage is gonna be picked up, but he does try to rage away from it. Rather, the X that is, there's nothing to say. Not gonna be able to stop him this time. So important for Jackie to just keep that farm going. For now, he'll hang around that Radiant Triangle to stay within the safety of the uh, of the Radiant Jungle. Yeah, they don't have the best vision right now from Boom to kind of protect themselves. Only one defensive ward down Bont, very far away from Jackie. They do go for a smoke play here on Boom's end, though. Might find, might find something juicy, although Y is there to break. Yeah, both supports are around. Good positioning from Y, but they are going to chase down Sin Q because he's the one with the streak up right now. So Sin Q, he'll get stunned up. Yopaj with a very nice spear. Sin Q really has no way out of this, so they do secure a nice pick up. Tims will be the one to take it. Yeah, that, that's a much bigger kill than Chen. With that streak coming off, Tim's going to get a nice injection of gold to work towards potentially down the line as Blink, which is going to be key to save out. However, LGD, I mean, you're, they're still farming a lot better. You've got the BKB up on Fade Beyond, so the Slaughter really has nothing to worry about. They're already making their way into Roshan with that Desolator up and running on Ame. And this is them taking it without the course of hate. Once Fate Beyond's there, this is not going to take too long. And again, boom, they don't have the best wards here to spot that. It's going to be a very, very fast process. Boom, they are making their way over, maybe trying to force a fight as the shards are out, and they really don't want to let this one go down. But how do you initiate a team fight here? The Wukong's being committed by Ame. There's just no chance in hell. So LGD, they'll take the first Roshan of the game. Defend that mid T1 tower, and it might be just time to group up and smoke up. They've got all the tools they need here on LG. Huge spikes out. Again, with that fresh BKB on Faith Beyond. With a fresh BKB on, nothing to say. And these team fights for Boom, it, it's not going to feel great. They have nothing to pierce through unless they somehow get a full channel on that egg, but you're not going to be able to protect as much with the arena with the BKBs up. We are going to have a quick pause. There is a headset issue right now. Of course, we did see FBZ. He's got the Spirit Vessel up now, so they might be able to start moving. Very, very quick pause, in fact. Very unusual as we are going to get the unpause underway. LGD. 
find anyone here for their trouble. Doesn't seem like it though. Yopash is within vision and Ame is going to try and slow him down. The Mars, how do you get out of this one? Ame, boundless, no, it's off the mark. A very nice sidestep from Yopash and he's out. Has his own BKB up now as well. Yeah, that would have been massive if he if they managed to kill him off. He barely had the gold to buy out the recipe. So that would have stalled the BKB just a little bit longer, give them an opportunity for a bigger fight. Scam yeah. is going to get caught. Nothing to say, should have no problems taking down the POS5 CM and does not. Meanwhile, Jackie, he's a much bigger target, but a nice rage away, avoiding the boundless strike for now as Tim's is going to TP out of there with the infest. He's just going to make it. That's a five-star review right there for Tim's. Perfect timing. Oh yeah, perfect escape vehicle coming out there. Right in the nick of time for Jackie to just infest away. They are dodging out from these bigger kills for LGD to find, but it, you're still not gaining too much ground. You are at least getting that buildup you want onto Jackie here. I mean, he's working onto his own death, so they might run into each other again. They may, nothing to say. He's a big target, but the spear is not going to land. Nothing to say. Going to try and go onto Jackie with the X-Bat, but it's not going to work out either. Shards won't be on the mark. LGD just trying to control that Radiant Jungle for now, at least the Triangle. Just such a valuable position for them to be in. Just bully out the sign of Boom Esports and don't allow Jackie that safer farm. Right into the top tier once how they go. This will really open up the map now and this is when LGD starts really choking you out of the map and not allowing you to farm in any safe position. Very strong play here from LGD and you kind of wonder what Boom does about it. They're just trying to retake control down bot. You do have really good forward vision here from LGD with her Observer Warrants here. They're going to be able to see who's farming in the bot jungle and they're really still safe. Mm -hmm. Age is still up for 2 minutes 40. They just melt these objectives with the Chen army and all the minus army they have with a low shredder and the desolator up and running. It doesn't take long to just just wipe this map out from Boom. Yeah, absolutely not. LGD they'll even find the top T2 tower, no problem. Calm play from LGD. And towards the bot lane army. They carry the, uh, the defense of the T1. Again, Boom Esports currently just playing the avoiding game, not wanting to deal with OGD whatsoever as they are still 11k behind. Just gonna stick, stick as a group right now, but the problem is you are still kind of being choked out. You're not getting any farm and you're letting Ame get all the farm in the world right now. That's gonna be a huge problem. It's gonna be a massive issue. And one thing that Boom does have to play with now is a fresh blink up on Tim. So they've got some saving plays with a the snowball. They can try to be a little bit more aggressive. I think you'd ideally just want Yopaj's blink at this point. Again, have that arena at the ready. Try to get some control out. Try to kill some of these key heroes. LGD just don't provide any openings. They're sticking loosely together in the same side of the map. Again, they've got better control. Really good wards to watch that top lane and just control the jungle area. And once they commit to a push, and Boom just don't even bother trying to defend. So they might be able to get away with maybe all the tier 2s very soon. It does seem that way. The bottom tier 2 tower just going to go down for absolutely nothing. Boom Esports just no interest in trying to defend. They will let it go down. LDD acting like they might go high ground here. I'm not quite sure about that one, but with the Desol up on Ame, still a minute and 15 to go on the Aegis, he might try for this. And he will. It's not going to be a long process. Not with Faith Beyond an Ame, just hitting away at that tier 3 tower. FBZ and Tims, they'll hang around the tree line. In goes Tims with the Walrus Punch. Ame, he'll get four staffed away and he'll be just fine. They don't want to take the fight anyway. With the Aegis up, they'd rather force LGD back. It's a substantial amount of damage being dealt by LGD. I think Boom will just be satisfied with the fact that their base is still intact for now. That's caused them at least one fortify and a lot of TPs out. Jackie is just hanging around trying to farm top. They will try to smoke off the back of that though. Might be able to snipe someone out while nothing to say did head up top at LGD. Very Radiant's synchronized retreat coming out. Under attack. Maybe Boom just not going to be able to really maximize the smoke. They need the kills. They've got to find a pick off somehow. Where do they go? Very hard position for Boom. They've got to try and find a way to get towards that Roshan fit, but it's just not that easy crossing that mid lane. It's nothing to say. He's going to show himself on that Kunkka. He has the x pack so he knows he's safe. No way to lock him down. Demi Sports again, fighting their time. Give more time over to Jackie, who's not too far behind. He's about 2.3k behind Ame right now, but considering the state of the map, it's just so hard to find that farm. It's not really the only armor you have to worry about because, again, Faith Beyond, he's pretty much transitioned to his own style of carry now, going into the Blink Dagger. Doesn't really need it, but just with that massive initiation now on the slaughter, it's just 
But Jackie, it's just so hard to get away. Yeah, it's a, it's an extremely difficult time for him. And you're so armored up now on the Kunkka again with all the saves you also have on LGD. You don't really have the highest burst damage on Boom. Jackie's going to need to twack away at one fellow for a very long time, and it just doesn't feel like he'll be able to sustain that. LGD going out for the smoke play now. Aegis is gone, so they don't have the safety of that, but it doesn't feel like they even need it. it certainly does not. Try to be aggressive here. Boom, very patiently waiting the trail, and they seem to have an idea. LGD are looking for a fight. Radiant are scanning. Control the triangle for now, LGD. Scan is there from Boom. Know exactly where LGD are at the moment. Get 14k deficit. They don't want the fight right now, and it does seem like they're going to successfully be able to get away from LGD. The thing is, if you are LGD, you might just set up for the, the mid tier 2 tower now. It's the only outer tower left standing. Seems like Y is just going to get started. Is he doing a decent enough job with the uh, with the support, with the fire spirits, just kind of pushing them back? Is he does see nothing to say. He does not really want to do with the conquer right now. LGD. You can find a double damage rune now for nothing to say. This could be prime opportunity for them to try and force another fight. Thing is, they've got to find Boomies. Yeah, I don't mind LGD actually just playing this safe. They've got control of the triangle. They've got the superior precision to push into that tier two. Whereas Boom have to play on the low ground on the defense. Doesn't feel great. You've got the blink up on Yopaj. So at the least, you've got a way to initiate. But again, it, it's so difficult to find the right target here to combine with FBZ's egg. They will go for a smoke play, though. Be very awkward timing, though, with that rune available. Boom. They're going to try for this. They've got a bit of vision in that mid lane, but they don't know where LGD are right now. Maybe they've got a brief idea, but the smoke is there. Faith Radiant beyond. He's going to have his smoke broken. Yopage not reacting quick enough to catch him out. So now both teams understand exactly where each other are. Looks like they are going to try and bait them forward, but boom, they're being very, very careful with their own position. They understand they've kind of missed their opportunity to surprise LGD. They are just going to back their way out once again. You really do need that perfect initiation in this kind of game. And it's just so difficult to find it. Like, you have so many things to worry about. Can you really try to kill off the Kunkka in the first burst salvo? Can you try to care, take care of the Monkey King? Maybe you have to take care of Fate Beyond, just in case Jackie gets focused on down the line. Uh, the threat of the snap bar is always there for Sin Q if he is inside the arena and the eggs in the right or the same spot as he is. So it's very conditional for Boom. And for LGD, it's just such a clean game. 3 to 10, 15k lead, 25 and a half minutes in. They've choked out Boom to pretty much just stay at the bot jungle area for their own farm in Jackie. He's gonna get jumped on here down a bot lane. Does have the rage available, so we'll try to run as now Faith Beyond is gonna make his way over, but a nice infest blink away. So they should be just fine though. Faith is still trying. Meanwhile, they have ended up getting Skim out of there as well, so he's fine. So it seems like they are not going to be able to catch up once again. Boom doing a fantastic job of avoiding the side of LGD. LGD just kind of running across the map, trying desperately to find a pickoff, but finding absolutely nothing. It's really turning to a game of hide and seek this game one. Yeah, they're just poking and prodding, waiting for those items up on Boom and LGD. Again, they, they would want to get some kills. They need a kill to kind of secure the tier two here. Boom might get aggressive. Do you see the rune though? Nothing to say. He's ready, but they're still gonna jump in. Warrior's punch is there. Arena down, but the spear was not there in time. The BKB was out. Nothing to say now. Gonna turn with the boat of the egg. It's still going. Can it last? It cannot. FBZ is down. Tims will try to TP away and barely makes it out, but they've left Yopaj all by himself, and he is gonna drop. Two down for the side of Boom and LGD. Very comfortably taking that team fight. It, it didn't seem like they were worried whatsoever. Oh, and again, you just see how difficult it is to actually initiate. Tim manages to blink and instantly get the walrus punch off, but one small delay with a spear and BKB's turn on, Arena does nothing. And off the back of those kills into the Roche once more LGD go. They've got the security now for a tier two into the high ground. I mean, you see just the, the quick BKB up from nothing to say, just unable to get the spear off in time. And that's really just what turns it, right? Like you get the boat off, you're just so much, you're so much stronger. And of course, FBZ with Diego as well, just a bit out of position, I would argue. Way too far forward. Making it way too easy for LGD to just take him out, and now they're onto the tier 3 tower. It's a clinic so far from LGD. The tier 3, not gonna last too long with all this minus armor available from Arme. Very confident just stay on the front lines is the Monkey King as the BKB has been forced out once again. Cookie will not land. They do find a tier 3 though, and LGD, they might not continue. The BKB's down for Ame, they don't want to risk it. Even with the Aegis up, you may as well wait till the BKB's back up and available and just take the 
just go high ground again. In the meantime, though, we do have a five-man smoke up. See if Boom can kind of try to find a little bit more. I'll jump in. Arena is there. They'll find some Q on that snap fire. It's not the biggest kill, but it is something. Yeah, it's something. You take what you can get now when you're this far behind. 19k lead still standing for LGD. Much needed kill coming out for Yopaj to find. And, you know, you're, you're not under too much pressure. You're going to have Egg off cooldown in a few seconds. Uh, Arena not the longest in the world, so you can kind of just take your time here as LGD. I mean, they've got a lot of security on hand, right? Like Aegis still up and running for three minutes and a half. Scotty being built up by Ame. So durable on this Monkey King and just taking away the healing that Jackie will want to do when he's right looking away. It's not, it's not getting any easier for the life seal. This, this is just not a game where it feels like Jack, he can just simply farm and carry the team. Everyone's going to have to work as a unit here up against LGD, and they're, they're just looking way more coordinated. Their movement's just been perfect. But they are down a bot lane. Faith Beyond, going to see Tim's, but the blink away is going to be there. Still Faith. We'll get a corrosive haze off, but that's about it. And LGD might be in a position now where they just push high ground again. The BKB is back up on Arme. Very, very good timing here from LG, just waiting that item out, and in they go. For the bottom tier 3 tower, boom, they will try to set up for this team fight. It's just so rough to see how you get the initiation off before the BKBs, but there it is. They've got the Conquer, nothing to say. He's a big target, but he's going to get out. He's got the BKB in time as Jackie's the one to drop, and now Yopaj is gone. Oh, it was such a great start, but they find nothing. Oh, they call it. They call it. Egg is down, they've had enough. Very rough game one here for Berman. Well, for OGD, it was just an absolute clinic. Yeah, they just played perfectly. Start to finish, from the laning, all the choices they made. They read the draft really well. We screwed, we heard how confident it was, right? Like, Gucci was, this is within expectations. We drafted to what we know we can handle up against LGD, and LGD shows us their prep work was probably a bit better. Yeah. Thank you uh, for bringing us the draft here at the panel. And yes, this could be the last match for Boom Esports. PSG looking primed to go through. And let's have a post-draft interview with Slacks, who's going to be talking to Zhao Eight. Thank you so much. I am here with Zhao Wei, the brightest mind in Dota and Dota's best hygienist and, of course, Helen to uh, translate here. Okay, Drow Visage. Even I am smart enough to know that's a good combo. Uh, nothing crazier than that? I thought you were a Dota 2 genius. You're just going back to basics? You're <laughs> Uh, well, I heard for, uh, in backstage that you talked about it. That's why I picked it. My bad. Okay, and uh, the other question, are you ready for the terrifying uh, Boom Bloodseeker? I mean, this guy has taken a lot of lives here. Were you expecting this? Uh, we already thought about it, so I believe that we will win. That's what I like to hear. All right, a lot of confidence, a lot of power coming out. Thank you so much. And we will throw it over to our wonderful casters. Let's get ready, boys. Thank you so much, Slacks. We do get into a game number two here between Boom Esports and PSG LGD. John, I, I've got to admit, um, PSG LGD game one, they made it look way too easy. You look at these drafts, do you, do you think it might be a bit of a closer match up here in game two? I still feel like LGD does have a really strong draft on hand, but boom, they've, they've fallen into a couple of comfort picks. You know, you're back to the FBZ Death Prophet that we saw him play throughout the entire season uh, from December onwards, and he's always had a great time with that. And of course, Yopaj on his Kunkka. He had to deal with nothing to say's Kunkka, but he's a Kunkka specialist himself. And now nothing to say is going to have to try to deal with that on his Ember. And that matchup's going to be a little bit more back and forth. So I think Boom does have a little bit more play, but just considering how easy it is to execute LGD's draft, I mean, it's Drow Visage. If they manage to get a running start, I wouldn't be surprised if they just dominate this game once more, if things go the same way as game one. Yeah, it's certainly a very scary draft here from LGD to try and go up against. And it's like you mentioned, John, like the tempo that you can apply here from LGD, the pace you can get going is bit too much to keep up with if Boom fall behind in this landing stage in this game the number two. We'll see if they begins. can keep up. At least in the second game, of course, everyone wants a third game to happen, John. We'll see, we'll see if they can make it happen. So, GD, 
We'll start with the mid lane. Of course, you're going to have nothing to say there against Yopage. On the Kunkka versus Ember, you, you kind of talked about the, the fact that these heroes are both specialties of the enemy here on the mid lane, but who should have the inherent advantage between these two? This does feel a little bit better for the Kunkka. I mean, you always have the Tiger to play with. You're not really mana constrained. Whereas the Ember is going to have to juggle around with the uh, bottle down the line, try to secure the water runes to keep that harassment up. Yopage can just kind of dance back toss around with the Tidebringer, get some good rotations out this time with the supports they have on hand, especially if Skem gets room to kind of swing out with a really nice creep here. Yeah, but you should block their top lane. Faith Beyond trying to get that creep big rear room going his way. Off the back of Sin Q. Of course, Skem and Jack are going to be right against them, and should be a decent enough lane here for Jackie, but levels do get up. You'd have to be a little bit worried about the amount of damage Faith Beyond can pump out, especially once he does have that soul assumption up. If he does go for it in the end, as I can see Skem asking quite a bit here on the end as well. And they just end up going for the Gravekeeper's cloak instead, just to, just to remain safe against all this harassment. We'll see what he does end up doing. I like this little move out from Skem. He recognizes that there is no soul assumption. He can pop some damage without being traded back favorably from the side of LGD and just try to give some space out to Jackie. This lane is still pretty annoying for the Bloodseeker. I'm just getting slowed up, losing a lot of attack speed on the Bloodseeker does make it a little bit more manageable for Fate Beyond to kind of just work that lane. What about that bot lane? Uh, Tim's and FBZ going to be against Arme and Y once again. This seems like a very potent lane here from PSG or GD. Especially once you have a couple levels up in the Frost Arrows in conjunction with the Tombstone from Y. It's, it's just so much damage and so much slow that can be dealt out. Just like if you get caught out of position, there's just no escaping it. Yeah, it's going to be tough for Boom to try to be aggressive here. If you can gap close onto Ame, uh, Bushwhack along with Spirit Siphon, you can kind of melt her down. But with Y blocking off the path on the Undying, it, it, you don't have too many access points to reach into that back line without copying a lot of decays, without maybe having the Tombstone come out if you overextend. So I think this is just, again, another safe lane coming out for Ami to just build up, and you shouldn't expect too much from FBZ. Maybe by the time he hits, I don't know, five threatening into six with the Exorcism ready, that's where action can pick up for Boom. Before that, unless Ami really missteps, it's going to be hard to punish that Rao. Absolutely. No first blood being drawn quite yet. We are seeing a bit of a shenanigans here from Skim and Faith VR. Bit of a pull here for Faith to be able to farm securely underneath or rather behind that T1 tower. Though Skim going to be a little bit annoying just hanging around, but actually will pull his own creep wave away as we do see Sin Q. Again, Fisher blocking here, just trying to set the creep equilibrium in the favor of LGD. Just wanting to give Faith Beyond a very easy lane stage to get started as Skim. Maybe chased down a little bit, but they have nothing to really lock him down. And Eventually, this creep wave will push into the T1 tower. That'll mean it'll push back the other way. Faith Beyond, he might need to be a little bit patient, but eventually the creep wave is going to be his way. Sin Q does actually find the courier of Jackie. Yeah, nice little snipe. Jackie knew it was coming. He tried to micro it back, but he didn't manage to get far away enough. Sin Q managed to just snipe it away. It's a nice little take, but Jackie did manage to get his items out, so it's not the worst thing in the world. Trying to top up in this lane is just going to be a little bit tougher. Sin Q is out of mana. Does have the mangoes ready, but he is getting the pull off, and there's really not too much Scam can do. He doesn't have anything like the Blightstone. Level 1 enchant, not re going to really slow down Sin Q, and Faith Beyond just, again, being allowed to get that EXP, along with a fairly greedy support in the Shaker, right? He does want his own e experience flowing in as well. Scam can't really stop that. Certainly cannot. Going to that Radiant Triangle, just take some, uh, take some creeps away, put a ward down as well. Sin Q will see him out of there, is now nothing to say. Mid lane, gonna get X'd up here by Yopage, but no torrent to come out. Nice fish from Sin Q, not gonna allow the water in to go back the way of Yopage. And eventually, well, Thames, he will secure the bottom water in at the very least. Nothing to say, he is gonna try and show up for that, but Thames will snipe it away from him. So neither mid lane are able to find a rune here. So it seems like LGD did adjust because this is one thing that Boom Esports were doing very effectively in the early stage of last game is just securing all the runes and making sure nothing to say couldn't get one. This time around LGD, they're going to make sure at least Yopash can't find his own. Yeah, and speaking of that mid lane match, we talked about how the Kunkka Ember shapes up. Nothing to say is actually working lane a lot better. 25 to 7 now on CS compared to Yopash is stuck at 20 to 4. Uh, Good lead here coming out from nothing to say. He's managing to even sneak away the bounty rune there. There's a little bit of action across the map as they try to jump, but they don't really have stuns on Boom's end unless they manage to get a good enchanted feat from Skim. Kind of punish Faith Beyond. 
And so far, this kind of static game, it does feel favorable for LGD. I mean, once they build the levels up, you get the marksmanship up, you get the familiars up, and you have this Ember dancing around you, you it's very easy for them to jump in and take these fights and go for objectives if Boone isn't careful. Now. Your Absolutely. is on board. Whole lane, a bit of aggression happening towards why it seems. He does drop rather low on the Undying, but still remains just fine. He has not scored up too much on or Soul Rip yet. He's waiting to get that skill point. The right moment to see exactly what he needs, but for now, Dyer's he's being very, very patient. Doesn't seem like Boom has been too aggressive down at the bot lane either, so it seems like both sides are just very satisfied farming up for now throughout this laning stage. We are yet to see a kill to come out. Not only many rotations happening either, though mid lane, nothing to say. You're going to get X back into a torrent. A little damage to follow up though. Yopaj gonna force the reset out of nothing to say. He can always just remnant back into the mid lane anyway. Meanwhile, bot lane, why? He's gonna deny himself off. Nothing to go back the way of Boom. Quick reset for himself. And always just TP right back to the lane. It's the six minute power runes now. A spawn up. It's gonna be down bottom as Yopaj able to take with the DD. However, or the Hoodwick, that's a nice push back out. Nothing to say. Dropping rather low. We'll rim it back the other way. However, you've got the enchant there from Scam. Controlling up. Nothing to say. They might have the damage, but Sin Q is gonna show up with the Fisher. Make sure they can't keep chasing. So instead, they've gotta go after the Shaker. But it might be first left to go the way of Yopaj. That Y is still around. He did drop the tombstone here. Is now Yopaj. Does get chained up by nothing to say, but there's not going to be much out of this. Just not enough damage. Boom, it seems like they're happy with what they've got. And forcing attention onto Yopaj. He's been playing around really aggressively with that potential on the six. Of course, it's hard to lock something in like the Ember. Maybe a bit of a small mistake. Didn't manage to really get the X off when he got that initial control on nothing to say before he zipped away. But you still find the big kills. You find that first blood. You're buying space out for Jackie, who has had a very free top lane now. So your Bloodseeker is going to meet that initial item timings you're looking for. The Maelstrom coming out, BKB down the line, the Shard once the time is ready. And it's going to be pretty tough to shove Jackie away. You still have concerns about Ami, though. He's not too shabby down bot either, and FPC is not able to do as much. But the power spikes are lining up for both sides. Familiar's going to be up for Fate Beyond soon enough. He can just camp that lane up top and keep it shoved out. And FPZ can always threaten with the extra system once it's ready. They're going to slow up Jackie, but not leading too much. Meanwhile, mid lane, however, they've got the Ember stunned up, but nothing to say. Got the Remnant out in time. They can't really follow up. Off the Ember Spirit for now. Bushwhack, though, is going to land from Tim's. Yopaj going to show up once again, forcing the remnants forward. However, they've even got the edge there. A nice little juke away from them to save, but they've got the X back with the bow, and they will find the Ember. Now, that's a much bigger kill coming up from Boom, and a much better start from Boom Esports. The, the, the aggression's lining up. We saw it in game one. Tim's and Scam were rotating in, but they weren't finding kills. This time around, they're able to play off the setup Yopaj had and dance around it. Sin Q trying to block off this push. Not the fastest coming out from Boom, especially without FBZ around to kind of speed that up with the XO. But they are chipping away slowly, forcing out responses here. Still a fair bit of damage thanks to the enchant of Skim as they are going to try and please chase down the Hoodwink. Tim still finds a bushwhack back onto nothing to say as he does run towards the south. Might actually make it up, but no, he does go down. Skim, he's in danger himself, but the heals are out as FBZ is going to rotate on the DP. Make sure they can't go for too much more. It seems like they are looking for the tombstone, but it may just be too late in the end. Just eventually expire. So one to three now, 2k advantage the way of Burp. Still at anyone's game, really, at this early stage. Seems like a, a very nice start compared to the last game, though, at least for this dire side. We're finding a little bit more. These small wins are starting to rack up a little bit. Jackie's had all the space in the world to keep farming. Does have a rupture up, but he's being surrounded here. Now Fish is there. Jackie, can he find his way out of this one? They've got the familiars to back him up. Jackie's still running. Doesn't seem like he's taking too much damage. In fact, now the rupture is there. Jinkyu gonna try and get his way out, but it's not gonna work. The torrent is there. Familiars, they will stun a little bit, but Sinkyu understands he cannot get away. So Yo Parch, he'll take his third kill on the of the game on the Kunker. Just so much activity coming out from Yopaj and instantly an EXO coming out here as well from FPZ. Trying to take that bot tier one tower. The push threat is online for Boom. And LGD, we haven't really seen them group up yet with the threat of the familiars. Again, you kind of want to just camp a lane, keep that farm up, slow down the core. They're not able to threaten in the same way Boom is right now. Certainly not. FPZ able to secure that bottom T1. All three cores of Boom now top to their word score. And this is basically a mirror switch of of what happened in game one, at least for now. LGD, they might still be confident in their own timing with this Visage kind of draft. 
might just take it easy, get their farm going, just trying to avoid the side of Boom. But Boom for now, they want to fight, and you can see it as Yopage going for a bit of a chase onto nothing to say. Won't end up going for the X up yet. In fact, now he's the one on the run. There might be somebody to cut him off soon, but no, it's only Y on the Undying. No way for him to really lock down the Kunkka. They're just trying to take these stacks away before they are forced to lead this dire jungle. Yeah, they take a creep off from Yopage. Not the biggest loss in the world here for Boom. They did manage to find the Tier 1 tower trade eventually from LGD's end, clearing out top. That does give them some good forward control here. There are defensive wards out from Boom to check if anyone is sneaking around the top jungle. And they've switched Jackie around anyway to play it into the triangle. So the buildup is still there. Still a rather even game. 1-4, to 3k lead for Boom. Slight advantage for them. And LGD, it, it feels like we haven't seen them play with their own strengths yet. You know, they're just taking their time, they're building up, they're not losing too much off the map. So things don't feel too bad for LGD at the moment, despite being a little bit behind. Yeah, still plenty of map control available on their own things. Using a bit of de-warding out. Very nice, just securing that Radiant Jungle. There's nothing to say, he had a bit of a slower start, working towards the Yule Scepter now, so a bit more of a, a defensive build for himself. Be able to purge off all these spells that are flying out from Burmers. You are going to have the fish around onto FBZ, but it's not going to lead to too much. They will spot out Jackie on the Bloodseeker. He's just going to be very confident to stick around here, though. There's Burm. Bit of a smoke up, but there's a counter smoke coming from LGD. See which one finds which first. Yopash. Can he make, make his way down south? Why? SinQ trying to hide right now, just don't give the opening away. SinQ having a very tough gun time already, always getting caught out here by Yopash. Oh, nothing to say, he's a much bigger target. They are going to land the X onto the Ember. This could be a fantastic start, start if they can find him, but they won't. The torrent will be off the mark and the Fissure will be there, so nothing to say. A very nice juke out. We'll be able to TP back towards the base. Yeah, really great juke. Dodges out with a slight of fist. The silence would have been on point, and that could have set up for the side of Boom to find that kill. Nothing to say, quick fingers though, does bail out in the nick of time. Boom, not gonna find too much for the trouble. They do invade the bot jungle, and they're buying space out for Jackie to keep his farm game up. Maelstrom already on the way out. Same could be said for LGD. Full Vlad's already up in Fate Beyond. Not too far away from, next, from the rate pack from this point. And once that's up, all that damage mitigation, all that durability of the Visage up front, it's gonna make these fights feel pretty awkward for Boom if they're not careful. If they can't manage to maybe isolate the Visage or just take it out of the equation early on. That's very rough against this hero, right? Like, just so tanky with the Gravekeeper's Cloak and, like you mentioned, the Wraith Pack to come out makes it even tougher here to, to deal with Faith Beyond. One of his specialty heroes as well. We used to watch him years and years ago okay. playing this hero and see now it's back in meta. That Visage is very, very scary to have to try and play against. Damage being dealt up to the Skem top lane. So nothing to say, just kind of poking and prodding at the edge. Skem going to be just fine to stick around, though. Has his own way of healing himself. Uh, the, the seeds of Serenity, I believe it is. and Just fine to stick around. Nothing to say, still trying to poke and prod, but it seems like the edge just going to keep kind of sticking around that top lane. Both sides just very comfortable with farming at the moment. Nobody's rushing for a fight. They're both trying to hit their own timings throughout this mid-game. They'll just sit back, relax. You kind of wonder who this favors, right? Because you you did have a pretty decent lead for Boom, and they still hold on to that lead. But is there a timing they're looking to, to kind of to hit? Teach. Because you, you can kind of tell LGD are trying to hit their own timing throughout that mid game with this visage. I think you're okay on Boom. You're just working towards those initial BKBs. Yo, Paj, very close to his. It's still lacking the recipe gold, but it's going to come out eventually. FBZ only lacking the recipe. So once you have at least two of these BKBs ready to go, you're going to be able to group up, try to look for those fights, try to find those objectives, and then you really start to hurt LGD's farm. For now, if this drags on, say, past the 20 minute mark in the staticness, L LGD starts to feel really good. They're going to have their own BKBs. They're going to have their own level spikes. Maybe even down the line, the blink out from Sin Q starts to pop up. And you just have issues in these team fights. You, it's already really hard to lock in, nothing to say. You're going to have to clump up for it. And once you're clumped up, Sin Q and Fate Beyond are going to get to town. See another smoke out. Boom, they'll head down towards the south, through the mid lane. Who are they going to find? Faith Beyond on that bit, it's showing up. Those familiars, there'll be an X out. This could be a big pick off, but the familiar stuns are going to be there. Still, the X is going to make it in time for the boat to land. They'll find Faith Beyond. The familiars may not be so lucky either, as they would at least find one of them. And now they are into that mid-tier 1 tower with the Exorcism. Not going to be too hard for them to take them down. In fact, they're bouncing Q now on the Earthshaker. They'll find a second. 
Thames just sniping from a mile away with that sharpshooter, slowing him down. And well, that'll be the mid tier one tower gone. And that's that's the time we were talking about. Not quite the BKBs coming out, but why? Find more. Trying to protect that Radiant Triangle. It's a lot of damage coming out from Arme, but not quite enough to finish off the job as Yopage able to find his fourth kill of the game. Trains will not land on any. FBZ going to try for the TP up, but the familiars will be there just in the nick of time. They will find at least something for their trouble. They get the big target out from LGDs, and it comes at heavy cost. And those kills, the tower take from Boom still feel a lot better for them to play off. And now the map shrinks a little bit more for LGD. They still have time to build up. And you are still getting some decent build up here on Ami. He's allowed to just play in that triangle. No contention coming out from Boom in that area outside of that one invasion. And they're just praying and hoping that eventually the Drow and the Ember are just going to be really hard to handle. Uh, for Boom though, again, we're, the BKBs are still on their way. That spell immunity is going to be a really big factor in the middle of these fights. The full raid pack is up on Fate Beyond. So again, if he does manage to use that item in time, Boom might have to spend more time trying to find that kill and give enough leeway for LGD to respond. Shin Q. He gets spotted out here. Skem will move in. Yo Pa, she'll be there with the backup. X into the torrent will connect. And it looks like Q just has no way out of this one. They will lock him down with the bushwhack and take him out once again. That'll be the fifth kill for the Conquer. Yo Pa off to a fantastic start. 16 minutes in. They top lane. They might have a look at nothing to say. Can they land the silence though with the bushwhack? Oh, it seems like they will be able to find the bushwhack because FBZ, the sharpshooter, is going to be up at the Ember. Has the Yule Scepter. We'll go for the runner towards the left side. And it looks like he's going to be just fine. He does have the stick charges. They don't have the burst damage for nothing to say. He needed the plus one to try to find that kill. Valiant effort. Not quite what they want, but it, it does shove nothing to say away, giving him more space again elsewhere to keep that farm game up. And Jackie is still getting his own build up. His own BKB is almost done. So it, it possibly could be just a triple BKB timing for Boom, where LGD, they're not going to have that same level of protection. Outside of the yields coming out here on Nothing to Say, they're going to be very vulnerable to damage here. Oh, nice chains out from Nothing to Say. Fisher will be there to follow up. The Tombstone has been dropped as well. This is going to be a fair bit of damage as the cast will land on both. Yopage, he does have a BKB up. He'll pop it immediately. But it seems like they just want to at least take this Tombstone down to get this team fight started. It will get denied off. Multi-shot there from Arme. It's a lot of damage for Yopage. He'll keep forward, keep moving forward. At least, at least a Sin Q does go for a Fisher, but he's trapped in the tree line right now. The bow will fly in. The sharpshooter's there. They'll find at least one as Tim's. We'll look for a bit more now, but nothing to say he's just fine. He's going to be, be able to back his way out. They'll only find the shaker. Still 2 to 9, 6k advantage. This whole time, Jackie is free farming. Mid lane, and they go again. They found Yopage another time. This time, Arme, he's got so much damage, and they will be able to find that mid conquer. There's nothing to say. He wants a little bit more. He'll move in, but the Sans is out from FBZ. Yules is out there to lock down FBZ. They should have the slows as well, but FBZ, he'll BKB up. He'll be just fine to back his own, his own way away. They cannot lock him down through the BKB. They do find a decent kill in the Kunkka, but that's going to be about it for LGD. I think you're pretty happy for LGD, though. If you force out those initial BKB uses, you only really lose your support. And you're starting to get some activity out from Ami. He's more than willing to join into these fights. So, Boom have to be really cautious about going in like that. You can't afford to just fully commit onto supports. You need bigger targets to kill off. Once those BKBs fade, uh, LGD can just kind of dance around. And once they shrink in duration, these fights become a lot harder for Boom to kind of find their openings for. The shot is there. FTC does get locked down. Looks like LGD are ready to try and push forward here against Boom, but they're unable to really find the lockdown they're looking for. LGD they will retreat look for a better moment for themselves. Opage hanging around, but he might be a bit too much of a tanky target to try and go on. LGD is still hanging around on the low ground, but doesn't seem like they're going to try and make their way up to the high ground for now. Meanwhile, again, I think the main kind of focus you have to have on here is, is Jackie on that Bloodseeker. He's 10k net worth right now. He's just absolutely huge. And well, I mean, he's not too far behind, but Jackie just seems like he's getting away with it a little bit too much. They will see nothing to say. No way to lock down the Ember, so we'll just kind of ignore him and go for the creep wave. And letting Jackie farm like this, always a scary affair. Yeah, he, he just knows how to work the map really well. Very efficient as a carry. Has been for a long time since his time on Motivate Trust. 
speaking of Motivate Trust, I believe his former teammates here, Mr. Fearless, yep. all the way from Thailand. Lots of people watching, of course. Working on for the basher here for Jack. So, gonna try to get some control going his way. Again, with all the room he has, that be, that basher time is gonna be pretty good. Yo, Pasho. Hey, Fion, he'll lose it to Milia. X is there on nothing to say, but he's gonna rim it out a little bit too early, so the Maybe X back is there. It won't matter, though. The follow-up is not gonna be out from Boom. Be a smoke out though, boom. So they can find with this. Wrap around through that that dire jungle. It's like LGD, they have smoked themselves as well. Both sides looking for that opportunity. It's a bit harder for Boom to try and make the way through the Radiant Triangle, just not having the vision, but LGD might be waiting. Ame, he's a huge target. The X is there. They have a way to drag him back, but the torrent's not gonna land in time. Oh, they missed time it. Why? He moved in to try and defend Army and has done so. Meanwhile, Jackie gets caught out. He does pop his BKB in the stick charges. He'll barely survive. Meanwhile, FBZ in the middle of nowhere is forced to pop his own BKB and make his own retreat. Fisher, though, gonna lock a couple down into the follow up. Tim's trying to run. More stick charges. Yo, Paj, he'll finally throw the boat out, but the chains are there to lock him down with the familiars. Yo, Paj, which way is he going? He wants a Roshan tonight, but he's not gonna find it. Faith Beyond will be able to take the killers now. Nothing to say. He'll find another. It's going to be Scam on the edge. The Fisher will be enough to just keep him down and take him out. That's two down for the side of Boom Esports. LGD really finding a great way of pushing back here against the tire. Well down to just small mistakes. Not being able to kill off Army. He did have the four staff to save. So that did complicate that in that fight. Having that way of just dodging out from control from Boom. And those are massive losses, like even Skem dying there, he had a gem, free gem coming out for LGD. They just melt the Roshan, you're starting to see that power of the Drow and the Visage. They just do so much work when they're grouped up together. And boom, they're, they're, they've got to be a little bit more careful. They miss out on the Torrent, which we see in the replay, and it just kind of falls apart from there. It certainly does. They just retreat in time, like Jackie getting caught up, barely surviving through that. The Echo Slam proving not to be enough damage here from Sin Q and even FBZ forced to pop his own BKB. LGD doing a, a fantastic job of just kiting this team fight out perfectly. And of course, the, the reinitiation there from Sin Q is exactly what kind of allowed them to punish Yopash, who had no choice but to try and go for the deny with the Roshan, but just doesn't end up working out in his favor. Just unable to get the attack animation off with the slows from Faith PR. But boom, I mean, it's just getting a little bit difficult. LGD, with the Aegis up, can take a little bit more risk in these fights. They could look to just take more objectives. The mid-tier one still standing. Could be a nice, juicy one to start to force into the Boom's jungle and just shrink the map even more. Like, they, they are just still getting killed up everywhere else. Like Yopage with the plate mail gonna feel a lot more durable up front. But again, it just boils back to burst damage. If Fate Beyond puts his body forward, with a raid packed up. He is such a huge nuisance that you do have to notice. You can't just ignore the visage in these fights, but they also can't handle it. And they have to execute here on Boom. It just feels like, again, we're seeing that difference in execution here, Mike, where LGD, it's a very well-oiled machine. And Boom, sometimes, every now and again, there's a little bit of jankiness in that movement out. It certainly is. LGD grouped up top lane, maybe going for a bit of a push in that T2 tower. They've hit a very nice timing now. With the security of the Aegis for Arme, feel very safe top moving top into this top tower, top. but there is going to be a smoke up from Boom. They want to try and defend this. Up through the mid river, there'll be a double damage available on Yopash. That could be the uh, exact path they kind of need here to take the fight on with LGD. Your Admiral is on board. See if they can find Sin Q on the back first. Because Fates Beyond going to be there as well, but they're all in the tree line. Sin Q pings around, but a nice Fisher. Sin Q locking down a couple again into the Echo. FBZ, he will get the BKB off in time. They're still trying to force the fight, but is this the one they really wanted? The boat is out. Yo, Punch, he's already retreating. He can't find the target he really needed to go after. And now FBZ, another nice Fisher lock them down, take him out, Scam, he'll get Yule's up, he's not making it out either. Now LGD, it just seems like they knew they were coming. They had just the superior vision, stayed in the tree line, and just surprised them and just don't show anyone. Sin Q just in the perfect spot to break that smoke, and boom, overcommit. They, they feel the pressure to try to make these plays. They don't manage to land on targets they want, and Sin Q's just been a nuisance with these fishers throughout all these fights, just finding the perfect angles to cut off boom. 
he has to secure a real, real nuisance. So you, know, you saw he trying to find Arme this whole time, but just unable to get him. It's the ward placement here from RGD, just fully prepped for that fight. Actually, at least Scam will be the second pick up here. It's RGD, really looking quite strong now. Still a 2k net worth lead available for Boom, but it's really nothing to write home about. We're 25 minutes into the game. It's a very evil one between these two teams. Still could go either way, but it's all about these team fights. It's all about the next Roshans. Speaking of Roshans, Aegis is still available for Arme, so you just, just never really had the risk of losing it this whole time. You kind of wonder, what does Boom do, do now? Like, do you want to slow down the game? Do you, do you keep trying to find LGD? Like, what's the idea? Step lively now. Uh, yeah, you need to at least maintain equilibrium here. Don't lose ground up against LGD. They've lost their gold lead entirely. You've got some protection coming out now for Ame. Lincoln Sphere up. So you can't just try to X her back. And that just attack. makes things so much more difficult. Feels like this game is starting to boil down to Tim's getting a good bushwhack off. Easier said than done. And the Drow is sitting so far away. They could try to mount some defense for the tier one, but it's pretty late in the game to kind of keep that alive. Oh Paint her out, that's a big target. Yopaj once again forced the BKB early just to run his way up, but they'll still lose the mid tier one tower. A double damage rune also being spotted out. The skim might be able to deny it off and does. He'll get away with it, not allowing nothing to say to pick that one up for himself. At least bottle it up. That LGD, they'll take over that dire triangle. Very strong position, deny more farm away from Jackie. They might just try and head over to the other side of the map. It just doesn't feel like they're ready to actually fight yet. Okay, they've got so much to play with now on LGD. It just feels like when you've got these heroes that can constantly run in and slowly poke and prod, Witty Ember, you've got the mobility coming out now on Sinfu. He's got the full blink up with a slam ready to go. And he's been a menace without that blink. When that blink up, it's just going to be so much more difficult for Boom to get anything done. But LGD in a really good spot right now. 7 to 10, slightly behind in kills. Not fully back in that fourth, but he even that deficit out. And they're the ones with the initiative. They're the ones working the map well. They're the ones forcing these issues onto Boom. It's been spotted. Why? He'll move in with the Glimmer Cape. Jackie seems to know they're right behind him. A nice fish out from ZQ, and Jackie's been locked down. Oh, that's a massive kill out for LGD. Stims also being chased down. They won't mind losing the Hoodwink. They got the Pos 1 Bloodseeker. Massive, massive win for LGD. Jackie just trying to farm where he can. LGD understanding that where they have to be. They have got good wards watching that top jungle. They just came from the triangle. So they knew the only spot Jackie would have to be in is in that triangle on the Radiant side. And the punishment is severe. LGD, I mean, the damage output coming out from Ame just with a Hurricane Pike and the Lincoln Spirits. More than enough, no one's there to gap close. And that marksmanship aura is always going to be active. And it will. Very, very tough. We just haven't seen any kind of risk for Ame at all. He's always just been in the perfect position every single time. He's unable to catch him out. As he continues that farm now, top of the net worth board on the Drow. Nothing to slow him down. GD, that well oiled machine you talked about. How well and truly running now is they're the ones that need to try and find an answer for this game number two. Yeah, you kind of wonder what they do here though. I mean, they're sitting back for now. They're just playing a little bit defensively, but it just feels like they've lost all the lead they had. And with the time that LGD is hit, they can, they can just take their time with this one. There's just no rush for game two. Just build up, keep getting that farm you want onto your drow. I think the one thing Boom could try to do uh, a little bit cheeky, go for the shard on Yopaj ASAP. Get the tidal wave, pull back the drow. That could be one way for you to get Ame out of position. Easier said than done, but it, it feels like you need that disruptiveness in these fights. The ag shard, maybe even the ags down the line, because you, you're not seeing any big DKBs here. Thank you. Of LG. Jump in, he has found Tim's on the hoodwink. Four staff away may not be enough, but no, it will be. They've got double. Tim's looking just fine as the zombie will chase him down, but. It won't be enough to pursue any further. LGD is still very careful themselves. They're not overextending. They're not giving any openings over to Boom. Want to fight nearby that tier 2 tower in the mid lane. Now Jackie, walking on towards his eye of Scar, he has a blink dagger up as well. Yopaj will try to rotate to defend the bot lane. It does do so, but can't find the familiars. 8 to 10. Still a 2k advantage the way of LGD. Still a very close match, but does feel like Boom are the ones that need to find an answer as they might smoke up, and they do. Smoke on smoke situation. 
across the other side of the map. The only thing they really see right now are the familiars. Because FPZ, he'll just try to secure those instead, and well, he gets one of them, might find a second, but they are going to be spawned back up by Faith Beyond. Really awkward position for both sides. Grosh still a ways off, so even if you lose this next fight, you might have the option to fight back. Oh, Thank you. you. Very aggressive play. We'll get X up back to the turret and the boat. They might find the Shaker and they will. It's something. Nothing to say. Shows the mid lane will creep skip. Backs towards his team once again. Both sides just waiting for the next Roshan. Still a couple minutes away though. Seems like Boom will try to infiltrate their jungle once again. Some D-Wards off while they can. FBZ who will look for the outpost. LGD, they are grouped up, ready to go whenever. It seems like they are not going to make the jump in. Not yet, at least. Again, Roshan still a bit away, though. It's going to be one to FBZ. Just fine, though. Just a bit of chip damage coming out from nothing to say. Yeah, they're working to this point where they might get this blink up on Tim's. So you're going to have an, a little bit more of an easier time for the Hoodwink to try to line up those hits with a Bushwhack, get that much needed control in the middle of these fights. Again, it does feel like a lot of it starts to boil down onto Tim's trying to surprise him. The X is just a little bit too telegraphed. You've got the BKB up and running as well for Ame, so much easier for him to dodge out if need be in the middle of these engagements as well. Change around on the edge. Skim. Just fine to back his way up. No problems here. Shun now one minute away. LGD, they're the ones that are really keeping tabs with these familiars, but they do at least have the skeletons coming in from Skem as well. They're gonna go for a smoke. We've got a five on five situation here in the mid lane. Who gets up in the initiation? First, the Fisher is there, but the BKBs are out in, in time. The tombstone is being focused. Both sides not really sure if they want the fight. Skem, he's gonna get jumped on. They found Yopunch, but the boat is out in time. Four stuff away. They need to save the conquer. Skem, he's the one in trouble, but no, they look back towards Yopunch. They should have him. Faith Beyond takes him down. Onto FBZ, they'll find the death prop and they'll just burst him down. So much damage coming up from Faith Beyond. Name just standing right behind him. It's like, how do you actually get to this Drow or the Visage? They, they have no reach. It, it just boils down to the fact that they don't have a high mobility initiator that can dance in. Something like the Ember, that was nothing to say, to try to catch the back line, to try to stop Ame from dishing a million damage in one engage. And off the back of that, with a double damage rune, of course, for Ame, Roche doesn't last too long here. Boom. And they had a great start. It's, it's ju it just gets harder from here, it feels like. Even with all the durability in Yopaj with the AC, if no one can touch Ame, all the armor in the world doesn't matter. Yeah. GD once again, now a 6k advantage. You'll see the replay, and there was a nice initiation, at least from Sinq, forcing out three BKBs with that one Fisher. And they just retreat immediately after seeing those BKBs, just no hesitation from LDD. They understand, they just need to wait those out, move back in, and then just get right to work. Like, you can try to run, but there's just so much slow available here as they are even going for tier 3 towers now. LDD, they understand the lead they have. Boom, again, they just haven't found the opening throughout this game. They will try to slow it down, but the tier 3 tower's already gone. Shot there from Arme, just scouting out Yopaj, will hold down the Conquerors. There's your pushback out there, find nothing to say, but he's got the Yule Scepter. Torrent is going to connect it with the Tidal Wave and the Rupture, but it's not going to be it. The Sharpshooter, he jukes it out! Oh, what a juke from nothing to say! Fisher is there, Sinq locking them down once again, just not letting them get out. Oh boy, three down for the side of Boom. This is looking real bad now. Zell GD, they will go for the tier 4 towers. How do you stop them? It's difficult. Maybe you get a good tidal wave back. We saw Yopash trying to make that play, but man, it's so much easier to do what LGD is doing. Just keep pushing in, play with the damage you have on hand. Fortify Forest out. Tier 4, about to fall. 16 HP left. LGD is so confident. They still have ages. There's nothing to be scared of. Absolutely not. The T4 towers once again. Skim trying to set up. He did buy back, but it's just waiting for a few more respawns. The T4 are dropping so darn low. They're onto the ancient now. Boom. Still waiting for the respawns, but they're not coming in time. They've got to try and rush for this, but the ancient is just completely going down. Sinq is holding everyone back. They finally make it, but it's too late. It is just too late. LGD. 
I can't took a credit, John. They made the series look easy. 2-0 the way of LGD. And what can I say? Boom Esports, they tried their best, but just weren't the better team today. It was such the journey out from Boom, of course. A 1.4% chance to even come in to that lower bracket that they beat Team Spirit in. And now having to face LGD a lot. The big favorite for a lot of people to win TI itself, or at least make it to the Grand Finals. They put up a fight, LGD, they come back so strong here. We're seeing that strength that might have been a little bit more up and down in groups that might not have shown in the early days of the playoffs. Yeah. LGD, they look to be back in fine form. It's just such a calm team, just such a coordinated team. is see, very composed, no emotions here from LGD. It's just another day for them, another 2-0 victory, and just look towards the next day is, of course, for Boomer. Pretty, pretty tough loss, John. A lot of these plays on Boom, first TI for them, and... They do have to leave through the lower bracket round of two, but it happens. Yeah, it happens. And again, just their journey to TI was a bit of a rocky one. Everyone had high expectations coming into the majors, coming into all the other tournaments. They do pretty good.